In this video, let's take a look at incremental static regeneration with an example. To quickly recap, I mentioned there was a need to update only those pages which needed a change without having to rebuild the entire app, which in turn would solve the problem of stale data. I also mentioned Next.js introduced the concept of incremental static regeneration, which allows you to update static pages after you've built your application. In getStaticProps function, we can specify a revalidate key whose value is the number of seconds after which a page regeneration can occur. Let's now understand its behavior with our product pages example. First, let's understand the behavior with just the product list page which will make it easier to understand the same for product ID page as well. Now in products slash index.js within get static props, we specify another key called revalidate. I'm going to set this to 10 seconds. By setting revalidate to 10, we are asking Next.js to revalidate this product list page every 10 seconds. This will ensure the updated product's data is served almost immediately without having to rebuild the entire app. Sounds simple enough, but there is one detail that is important to make note of. And to understand that detail, I'm going to add a log statement within getStaticProps. Generating or regenerating product list. This will help us understand when exactly is this get static props function called. Let me also delete this dot next folder. And now in the terminal, run the command yarn build. Make sure in your first terminal, JSON server is still running. So new terminal, yarn build. Once the build completes, you should be able to see the log statement in the terminal. In this case, product list is being generated. We can also see the page corresponding to slash products, which is specified as a static site generated because of the filled circle next to it. But unlike the users page, we have some additional info for the products page. The build mentions that the product page can be regenerated every 10 seconds. Let's see this in action. In the terminal, run the command yarn start to serve the app. In the browser, empty cache and hard reload localhost 3000 slash products. When we do that, we don't see the log statement from get static props. This is because the page that was generated from the build is served on the first request. And the log statement corresponding to that was already seen as part of the build execution itself. Right here. Now though, since 10 seconds have elapsed, if I reload again, we see the log statement in the terminal, generating or regenerating product list. This time we are in fact regenerating product list page. So every 10 seconds, if you reload the page, the log message will appear in the terminal. So let's wait a few more seconds, reload, and you can see the log statement once again. And what you have to keep in mind though, is within that 10 second time frame, if you reload even a hundred times, always the cached page will be served and no regeneration happens. And that is the purpose of this revalidate key. Let me show that to you now. 10 seconds have elapsed, so when I reload, we should see the third log statement in the terminal. However, if I go back, 
and quickly reload a few times. I've gone beyond the 10 second limit, so I did regenerate again. So I'm going to make the next one really quick. So we now have four messages. Go back, refresh. We see our fifth message. Go back, refresh once, twice, thrice, four times. We still have only five log messages. I'm guessing by now you probably have guessed how this is going to help us when the API data changes. Get static props will run on the next request after 10 seconds, which will fetch the latest data and display in the browser. And you're right in thinking so, but there is a small difference in how that works. I want to demo that with our example because I feel it will be confusing otherwise to understand what incremental static regeneration is actually doing. I'm going to reset revalidate to 30 as I need 30 seconds to explain what is happening before we reload the page. So 30, I'm also going to delete the .next folder to be on the safer side, yarn build, and then yarn start again. Empty cache and hard reload, and our app is now displaying data corresponding to products in db.json. Let's say there is a sale and product one is now priced at 800. If we save the file and verify this in the browser, we should see the updated value being returned from JSON server. If I refresh the products page though, we still see product one priced at 900. We also don't see the log statement in the terminal indicating the regeneration hasn't happened yet. Now, if you're looking at the video time, I'm guessing 30 seconds have elapsed. I want you to pay real close attention as I reload this page. The page reloaded, but the price is still 900. If we look at the terminal though, the page in fact has regenerated. If this is the case, why is product one still showing 900 instead of 800. Observe closely again as I reload the page once more. Now to our surprise we see 800 and it is this behavior which typically confuses us when understanding incremental static regeneration. So let me explain what exactly is happening behind the scenes. Next.js works on the stale while revalidate strategy. Now, how does that work? Consider our scenario. A user makes a request to slash products. The pre-rendered HTML page is served to the browser. For any request thereafter, but within 30 seconds, the same cached HTML page is served even if there is a change in the data being rendered by that page. After the 30 seconds have elapsed, if a user makes a request to slash products, Next.js is still going to send the cached version of the page. This page is a stale page as it doesn't contain fresh data. But what does happen in the background is a page regeneration is triggered. Once the page has been successfully generated, Next.js will invalidate the cache and for any new requests, it serves the updated products page. If the background regeneration fails for some reason, the old page remains unaltered and the server will continue to serve it. So Next.js basically serves the stale page while revalidation is happening in the background. This is the reason if we reload the page in the browser, the page is cached and a change to our JSON, let's say product price of 700, doesn't immediately reflect in the browser. So refresh and it is still 800. If I edit out the 30 seconds wait time, 
reload the page, the page regeneration has been triggered and the stale page sent to the browser. And if I reload again, I see the updated page. Now, if you're curious as to how this is happening, in the network request tab, you can see max age set to 30 and also the stale while revalidate cache control headers. You can explore more about them if you're interested. But I hope you now have an idea of incremental static regeneration. Let's add the revalidate key to product ID page as well and rerun the scenarios. That will help cement our understanding of ISR. So in product ID.js, we then get static props as part of the returned object. We also set revalidate and let's set it to 10 seconds. I'm also going to add a console log statement. Regenerating product params dot product ID. Now I'm going to delete the dot next folder and rebuild the application. So yarn build. This should generate the HTML for product ID equal to one. Let's now start the server and navigate to slash products slash one. The price of product one is now 700. I'm going to change the price to 500 in db.json. Now I'm going to edit a couple of seconds out from this video to ensure we have completed 10 seconds. If I refresh again, the price is still 700. But if we take a look at the terminal, we see the log statement indicating the regeneration happening in the background. If I refresh one more time, the price is now 500. So only the page corresponding to 1.html was regenerated. The same happens with product ID equal to 2. Since this page is not returned by getStaticPaths, the static generation happens on the initial request. The log statement in fact says regenerating product2, but this is the first generation of 2.html. This right here. Let's change product2 price to 1050. 10 seconds have now elapsed, so refresh the page and the price remains 1000, but the regeneration is happening in the background. Refresh again and the price is now 1050. So we are able to regenerate pages that were not even generated at build time. We are incrementally, statically generating pages. With this, we are able to solve both the problems I mentioned in the previous video. Using getStaticPaths, we can ensure only the popular product pages are generated at build time, thereby reducing the build time. Rest of the pages are generated when the user makes the initial request. By setting the revalidate key, we have also solved the problem of serving stale data to the users as the individual page will be regenerated based on the revalidate key value. The value of course is completely dependent on the nature of your application and how you define the application behavior. For example, an e-commerce site with relatively low traffic and active users can have a 60 second revalidation whereas a high traffic site can have a revalidation of even one second as it is really important to ensure there is no stale data even for a couple of seconds. Another example could be a documentation website which can have revalidate set to 60 seconds to make sure changes in the documentation are not stale for a long period of time.
Now there is one last point I want to discuss before we wind up and it is about the regeneration. Please keep in mind that a regeneration is initiated only if a user makes a request after the revalidate time. So if a user visits our product details page but there is no other user hitting that page the entire day, the regeneration does not happen. So revalidate does not mean the page automatically regenerates every 10 seconds. It simply denotes the time after which if a user makes a request, a regeneration has to be initiated. The regeneration can also fail and the previously cached HTML could be served till the subsequent regenerations succeed. But this is pretty much about incremental static regeneration in Next.js. Now, even though a stale page is served while the regeneration happens in the background, incremental static regeneration is a really good pre-rendering solution to have in your toolkit. However, at some point when building your app, you might come across a situation where you simply cannot afford to serve stale data even for a second. That is your cue to learn about the second form of pre-rendering, which is server-side rendering. Let's learn about that in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Please do leave a like if you are finding the videos helpful and I'll see you all in the next one.